Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Sandy Potter, along with Masonic Care President and CEO, JP Vinoy, Dr. Ronald Schwartz, our Senior Director for Continuum Health Services. And we're very happy to have Sierra Drebline with us once again. She is the Director of Employee Health Services for Masonic Care. Welcome back, Sierra. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Dr. Schwartz, let's begin with the latest on COVID-19 booster shots. There are, are now multiple vaccine options for people to consider when choosing a booster. So how do we decide which one to get? That's an excellent question, Sandy. And I just happened to have an article here which says, which COVID-19 booster should I get? So I'm going to discuss that with you today. And once again, these articles are pretty long articles and I try to condense them down and give you the, you know, the main points of things. And I'll be reading, you know, different comments um, from different experts and so forth. And it's kind of broken down really into two basic parts. One is, you know, if you got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, you know, what different choices of boosters would you have? And then the second, if you got like an mRNA vaccine, uh, like Moderna or Pfizer, which would you get? So I'm gonna read this a little bit and hopefully give you the you know, the main points. So, so they start by saying, to recap, if you're over 65, have a high risk health condition, work or live in high exposure setting, or you've got Johnson & Johnson, you're now eligible for a booster shot after waiting a specified period from your last dose, two months from J&J &J, and six after an mRNA. If you're immunocompromised and you got a third dose already, you'll be eligible for a booster. Then they say beyond that, the CDC and the FDA have taken a fairly hands-off approach to which booster you should actually get. So for the moment, this is what we, we know right now, the CDC recommends using the same vaccine for all of your shots, uh, but that's not binding. In practice, you can get any vaccine that's available. So how do you decide? And I think the, the, the main point they're trying to make is you're going to be better protected against COVID no matter which booster you get, but still preliminary evidence and some scientific first principles suggest that mixing vaccine technologies may give a stronger response. So that's interesting. So now we're going to sort of focus on if you got the Johnson and Johnson and they say if you got Johnson and Johnson, there's a simple answer. And this is a quote from Monica Gandhi. She's an infectious disease specialist at the University of California in San Francisco. And her quote is the only thing that makes a difference in my mind is if you got Johnson and Johnson first, then at that point, I think there is a clear second second dose, which needs to uh, get an mRNA. And to follow that up, they say other infectious disease researchers said the same with varying degree of confidence. And just to explain that, there are practical, theoretical reasons to think so. J&J &J is based on different technology, as we've talked about in the past, than mRNA vaccines, and it appears to prime the immune system in a different way. So for instance, J&J &J appears to do a better job revving up T-cells, a durable tool in the immune system's arsenal that protects against severe illness. And this is another quote from Martina Sester. She's an immunologist at Saarland University. And she said, the particular value of the J&J technology is T-cell priming, and it could be efficiently boosted by mRNAs. And this advice cuts along safety lines as well. And this is something we've talked about in the past that J&J &J has been linked to the most serious of any COVID vaccine side effects, serious blood clots. But I think the thing to emphasize is the risks of getting them are, are extremely rare. And the CDC has, has uh, recorded cases in about seven of every million women. So you see how still rare that is between 18 and 50 who receive it. And I think the other point that we keep emphasizing is COVID, which most people will likely be exposed to at some point, carries a substantially higher rate of blood clotting. So you're much more at risk of things if you don't get the vaccine. But if you're in that demographic, if in that demographic, it likely makes sense to skip the question altogether and get an mRNA vaccine. So that's what they talk about with Johnson & Johnson. If you've got an mRNA vaccine first, this is the next part of this article, the answer is less clear. And you know, again, mRNA, we're talking about Pfizer or Moderna. So this is a study from the National Institute of Health and that's one of the few to work with multiple booster combinations. And they found that close to 100% of people who started with an mRNA vaccine and boosted with any vaccine, and they emphasize any vaccine, doubled the antibodies in their blood within 15 days. 
So the take home point is that all vaccines work. And this is a statement from Christine Like. She's the senior author on this NIH paper and she's an immunologist at the University of Maryland. So finally, we're almost done. <laughs> on the safety side of things, switching from mRNA to J&J &J would make some sense for some people. And we talked about this as well. Men under 25 have a very slight risk of a mild heart inflammation. Remember, we talked about myocarditis following the mRNA vaccines, although even when it does occur, it generally goes away quickly. And they emphasize again that COVID again carries a higher risk of more severe forms of, of myocarditis if you, did, if you just got the virus itself and didn't get vaccinated. So that might suggest that people in that demographic should boost with J&J. &J. And again, this is a quote from uh, Martina Sester, as we spoke about before, that she thinks that the extra immune response generated by mRNA vaccines probably outweighs the slight risk. And her quote was, I would not recommend that unless I know different data, she says. So I know I gave you a lot of information, but you can see there's a lot of you know, a lot of changes in thought and a lot of still studies that are going on. And we're going to continue to follow this and, and update you on a regular basis. So this week, I'm going to do something a little different that I haven't done in all this almost year of doing the shows. I do have an inspirational quote, but I'm going to save it till the, the very end of this uh, presentation and just end by, like I usually say, thanking everybody for all their dedication, hard work, cooperation, and, and just again, keep wishing health and peace. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Schwartz, for helping to break all of that information down for us. We appreciate it. And Sierra, here at Masonicare, you've been working nonstop to provide all the vaccine booster options, as well as managing the regular flu shot distribution to our team and our residents and patients. It's a huge job. How is everything going? Hi, hey, Sandy. Everything is going very well. And before I get into the details, I just want to thank Dr. Schwartz for his back on the boosters. We have a lot of staff with questions during our clinics, and I think it's really helpful to stay on top of the current guidance when it comes to making that decision for which booster dose to get. And um, when we have a lot of questions in the clinic, the pharmacists have been exceptionally helpful in, in talking through that with the recipients. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. At the time, um, 245 staff have received their boosters, which is just shy of 20%. And uh, the goal, while the vaccine is not mandatory to have a booster, the goal is to provide availability for it because we want to make sure that our staff have optimal protection against the virus. So I think it's very important to keep those options open, keep the clinics on a consistent schedule and continue to have the availability within our facilities. I also too wanted to mention that over 700 of our residents have received the booster through our clinics as well. So uh, with it being the flu season and um, vaccines being distributed, we have been um, making them as available as possible. CDC guidance suggests that they can be co-administered and we have had a few staff take us up on that option. Uh, we have um, those who do not wish to do that and that's, that's totally okay as well. So we have options for clinics throughout the next two weeks in order to make up the difference there. So thank you. Yes, they're going well. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. You're on top of all of that and we appreciate you managing it for us. And JP, it's November and we suddenly see the holiday season approaching quickly now. We're all cautiously optimistic as COVID positivity levels remain fairly low, but we know we need to continue to work together to keep each other safe and healthy. So Sandy, uh, we actually had our first case 584 days ago today. And, you know, when you think about the really the, the timeline of, of where COVID has been and where it continues to go, these next few months are, are critical and, and truly understanding uh, whether or not we can get to that normalcy that we're looking for. Uh, last year, November, December, into January were one of our most uh, traumatic times uh, for our state, our country, uh, and all of our employees. 
um, because that's really when you saw a very significant increase in the number of cases of COVID. What I'm, I'm very encouraged by looking at the data is when the vaccine started to come out, you saw the cases go down. You saw the hospitalizations go down. You saw uh, the uh, deaths go down. And I think we're, we're expecting that. But the next few months are, are critical in, in truly knowing that uh, we are on the other side of, of this virus. And, and I, I have to thank uh, Dr. Schwartz, uh, Sierra, uh, and Sandy you know, this has been a, a time where information has been critical and, and all three of you have been instrumental in allowing Masonic Care to get the information and the data out. And I think it's made a difference. Our staff, our residents um, really have heard us and have heard you make sure that we are telling what the information that needs to be uh, sent out. and. When we look at our organization, our employees, uh, the boosters, uh, we're, I'm encouraged, a uh, little less than 20%. We just started doing the boosters. So remember, uh, it, it's going to take us a while uh, to uh, administer all the boosters to many of our staff who uh, have may not even hit that six-month mark yet. So. Uh, we are definitely moving forward in, in the right direction. 700 of our residents and patients is, is truly amazing. I know that we've got a bunch of clinics over the next few weeks that will get uh, more staff and will get more uh, residents. So I'm extremely encouraged by uh, the booster shot being administered. And I think this is gonna get us again to that next step. You know, recently CDC also uh, approved, I believe it's the five to 11 year olds. And, and I think that's uh, critical in getting us uh, really to be able to combat the virus in, in a different method, which I think is is definitely the ability for us to lower that positivity rate. And, and, and I do have to say, Connecticut has done a, a very good job, uh, both on uh, keeping the positivity rate low uh, and making sure that everyone is safe. Our employees know that what they do each and every day makes a difference to those that we serve. The booster and the vaccine is another opportunity for them to make sure that they're protecting their own employees, their loved ones, and our residents. And, and my hat is off to all of our staff for all that they have done. It, it's 584 days of, of uh, stressful times, but, we have come through, we have prevailed in such a way that I, I am so proud of, of what our employees have done. So thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Schwartz. Thank you, Sierra. And thank you, Sandy. Uh, you have been true leaders in helping combat uh, COVID with Masonic Care. Thank you. Well, thank you, JP. I know I speak for everyone when we say it's just been Pleasure to be part of the team with you, and together we all know that we can remain Masonic Air strong. Uh, you know, before we go today, we did receive some breaking news. Uh, today is a very special day for you, JP. So we wanted to be among the first to wish you a very happy birthday and a fantastic year ahead of much health and happiness. Thank you. Thank you very much. I did want to save my inspirational quote for you, JP. <laughs> I hope you like it. And here it is. So it says, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. And today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. And that's from Eleanor Roosevelt. So that's my present for you, my nice inspirational quote. So happy birthday. And thank you thank for you. everything you do. Thank you. Thanks uh, to all of you. Well, this has been a pleasure and I thank you so much for sharing your time and insights with us as always. And of course, we thank you for joining us at home once again. Until we see you next time, we hope you'll stay safe and stay well.